Hi everyone, my name is Katie Lanier and I'm a senior art therapy and psychology student at Mars Hill University. Thank you for taking the time to join me today as I talk about resilience, adversity, art therapy, and the research that I've been able to do this semester. The title of my work is Finding Art and Resilience, How Art Therapy Affects Resiliency in Disadvantaged Children and Adolescents. So what is resilience? We tend to get called resilient when we overcome difficult situations in our lives. Our resilience can be measured in how we adapt and cope to those difficult moments in life and ultimately move past them. Everyone has the ability to be resilient. It's not an extraordinary personality trait that some people possess while others don't. It's a normal part of human development that everyone is capable of. Likewise, in some cases, we're more resilient in certain situations, while in other situations, we tend to not be as resilient. And that's an okay thing. Resiliency is ultimately a process that we go through throughout the entirety of our lives. Resiliency is also a very popular topic in psychology and has been defined various different ways. This can sometimes cause a difference in interpretation of data found in studies, and it can sometimes skew data based on how a researcher has defined it. However, in the literature that I reviewed, I found a lot of overlaps and consistencies in these definitions. I think if we work towards defining it more consistently and giving it an operational definition, future research on resiliency can be a little bit more efficient. So what do we know about the, the definition of resilience? Well, resiliency is a part of human development. What we do with resiliency is we overcome and process adverse experiences, which are just those difficult moments in life that throw a wrench into our plans. How do we overcome those different experiences in our lives? We have different coping skills and resources. Those can be skills that are internal to our person, and those can be things that are um, strictly for you, or it can be outside resources or our support systems out in the world. So when we know how to define resiliency, we start to look at how we can observe it in research. This brings us to the two main aspects of resiliency that researchers look at. Those are your protective factors and your risk factors. Protective factors are personal or environmental characteristics that ultimately help promote your well-being and they help promote resiliency. These can range anywhere from your ability to regulate your emotions to a person's physical health and even to their ability to be creative. It can range from that to even your relationships with family members, with friends, and with community members. And it can even include your family income level and your educational level. On the other side of that are your risk factors. These are very similar to protective factors. However, they can negatively impact your well-being and your ability to be resilient during difficult times. Like protective factors, it can also include your ability to regulate your emotions. It can include your relationships with family members, and community members, and it can even be things like your family income level or your educational level. What makes it a risk factor is when they're not as healthy. So if you're not able to recognize your emotions and then sh express them in an appropriate way, that's poor emotional regulation. It can be a risk factor because it causes stress and can limit your ability to be resilient when you're put under stress in those negative life situations. So you've heard me talking about difficult life situations or difficult moments in our lives when talking about resiliency. The research often calls this adversity. Adversity can best be defined as the events that occur in our lives that can cause stress or even trauma to us when we experience them. Now, a lot of my research focused on children and adolescents. What they called those experiences of adversity were ACEs, or just adverse childhood experiences. This is just an umbrella term to cover all of the different ways that a child can experience adversity early on in their lives. 
Some examples of adversity include poverty, lack of support, trauma, natural disaster, abuse, and toxic stress. You can see here that there are some adverse examples that are um, tied really closely to risk factors and resiliency. Things like poverty are tied into your family income level. A lack of support is really stressed with those relationships to friends and family members and community members and can be really important on how impacted your resiliency is in difficult times. Understanding adversity isn't just important because of its relationship with resilience. Adversity is very prominent in our society. Here you can see a study conducted in 1998. They had 17,000 participants ranging in age from 19 to 60. What this sample size showed was that nearly two thirds of them had experienced at least one adverse childhood experience in their lifetime, and almost a quarter of the sample size had experienced three or more. Adverse experiences have negative impacts on our health, whether it's physical, emotional, or cognitive. If you think this data is a little out of date, there was a study conducted in 2017 in the Appalachian Mountain region. There were 2,500 participants. In this study, they found that 98.5% of the sample size had experienced at least one ACE in their lifetime, and over half of them had experienced multiple. Research consistently shows the negative impacts that adversity can have on our lives. It's important that we continue to find tools that we can use to help diminish those negative effects and help promote resiliency instead. This brings us to the research that I've been lucky enough to work on this semester. I've had the wonderful opportunity of being partnered with Beacon of Hope, a local organization in Madison County. Beacon of Hope has been open for tw over 22 years and their mission has been to provide food, emergency assistance, a low cost thrift store, and advocacy to those who are in need. While they have a food pantry that's the second largest food distributor in Western North Carolina, they also have a thrift store and a community market that are very important. They receive donations and then sell them very cheaply um, to help provide clothing and hygiene products to those in need. Within the thrift store and community market, they now have a new program called the Member Credit Program. This allows members to volunteer and earn up to $80 a month for their household so that they can come into the thrift store and community market and buy those necessary hygiene and clothing products that they need. Beacon of Hope is ran by two wonderful program directors, Jesse and Melissa. They've recently received a grant for their marketplace. In return for this grant, they'd be looking at their member credit program and seeing if it's really achieving the goals that they have set out for it. That's where I come in. A lot of the goals that Jesse and Melissa have for this member credit program fall in line with the protective factors of resiliency. The main groups and goals that they have include social competence for the members of this program, their ability to solve problems, their autonomy, and they stress, most importantly, the people who volunteer, their sense of purpose. A lot of people who come to Beacon of Hope have had very adverse situations pop up in their lives. Some have lost their sense of purpose, and through this member program, they really wanted to stress that members have found a new place where they can provide and give back to their community. By working together, and with my knowledge on resiliency and adversity, we created a review using four different psychological scales. These include the brief sense of community scale, a meaning in life scale, a brief resilient coping scale, and a brief resilient scale. These questionnaires were chosen for this review because they focus on things that fall along under these four main goals. Things such as needs fulfillment, your sense of membership, your achievement, your relationships, they were all questions that were focused and can fall under things such as sense of purpose, your autonomy, your problem solving ability, and your social competence. I also focused on having four questions from the resilience questionnaires because I wanted to see if it 
any factors of resiliency played a major part. My plan was to take this survey to Beacon of Hope and conduct one-on-one -on -one interview sessions with members of this credit program. However, due to the closures with COVID-19, I was not able to actually conduct this research. However, I do have a fairly strong hypothesis that the more time that is spent in this program, there would be a greater sense of support, of a sense of purpose, and an impact of the program. This just means that a member who's been there for a year might have a greater sense of purpose, might have a greater sense of social competence than versus a member who's only been there for a month. Likewise, if you've been there from a month and take this survey then, and then take it again in six months or in a year, your social competence, your autonomy, your sense of purpose, and your problem solving ability would all grow from being in this program. While I'm a senior and I won't be able to continue this research next year, Beacon of Hope is a wonderful community partner and any student who feels interested in this work should definitely reach out. Dr. Jono Kwiatkowski has really helped me during this journey and if you contact her, she might be able to also connect you on this path. Now you might be wondering, Katie, where's the art therapy and all of this research and all of this work you've done? Well, while Beacon of Hope hasn't been focused on art making this semester, what I did find in my research during the fall was that art therapy has a lot of potential to help promote resiliency and help diminish the negative effects of adversity. Visual art therapy is a form of therapy where an individual can use art materials such as paint or clay under the direction of a licensed art therapist to work through unresolved conflicts or emotions memories, you name it, that might that they may be unable to communicate verbally. Through my research, I was able to see that different art therapy interventions that were specifically designed to help promote resiliency focused on a lot of the protective factors and preventative care, and a lot of them coincide with the work that I'm doing with Beacon of Hope. For example, a creative experience is a protective factor. When someone's creative capacities are allowed to be expressed and promoted, it becomes a protective factor for promoting resiliency. Likewise, mindfulness and having empowerment are also very important and can coincide with a sense of purpose, with being able to be aware of yourself and your emotions and regulate those. And having that empowerment really helps the person to express themselves. While I'm a senior, I plan to graduate and then continue to gain a master's in art therapy and counseling. I'd like to continue my education through research on more resilient coping mechanisms and being able to really help find efficient and effective ways that art therapy can be used to help promote resiliency and help diminish the effects that adversity has on us as a society. With as many adverse experiences that occur today, I think it's important that we have as many tools and resources available to us as necessary, and I think that art therapy can be a very efficient tool. In conclusion, I want to say thank you again for listening to my presentation. With everything closed because of COVID-19, I hope that you're all finding ways to stay resilient despite the negative consequences. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me at the email provided, or if you're interested in potentially working with Beacon of Hope in the future, please contact Dr. Kwiatkowski at that email. Thank you. I hope you have a wonderful day.